Oh, hey. Alright, now that the vegans are vegan, it's time for me to talk about one of the most controversial topics of all time. Hands! We use them every day, all for the right and wrong reasons. But for gamers like me, hands are our most efficient tools in accomplishing some of the toughest challenges known to mankind. Mashing the A button. Humans have evolved through countless years and have survived some of the toughest times known to history, and we caused and survived those events using our hands. What could possibly be worse? Super Meat Boy, a name that brought great fear into the hearts of gamers, a name so terrifying that it made its way into the list of psychological torture methods in Wikipedia, the best place for all your sources. A game so difficult, I never even played the game. Now, of course, I have heard the name Super Meat Boy, and I have watched many people play the 360 game, and just recently it was free in the Epic Game Store for a limited time, so I had to try it out. Now, some of you might be asking, well, why aren't you playing the first game? And to that I say, I live in the Philippines. Super Meat Boy Forever is an indie platformer developed by Team Meat, the original folks behind the first game, Super Meat Boy, which launched back in 2010 for the Xbox 360. I never played that game cause I had more urgent matters to deal with. Forever was released on December 23, 2020 for the Switch and PC, April 16, 2021 on the PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X, and on mobile phones on April 20, 2023. And unlike the first game, Forever featured a new auto-runner control scheme, meaning you can't control the direction of your character nor can you stop their movement. Plus, it featured randomly generated levels. I can confirm this because I tried looking up a way to get past a certain stage in a game and found nothing, so I slammed the spacebar on my keyboard and hoped for the best. Moving back to the gameplay, since you automatically run and can control the character's direction, the entire control scheme only uses two buttons. You can jump by pressing the space bar once and punch by pressing the space bar twice. You can slide by holding the down button. While sliding, you have a few moments where your fist sticks out and during this, you can take down some enemies. If you're in mid-air, you can only punch once, which can be primarily used as a double jump, and you can hold down the down button to dive your way to the ground. Within each level, there's a preset time for you to beat. Beating that record or finishing the level by not dying multiple times can grant you an A plus or higher. There are about 12 levels per world, 6 in both light and dark sides, an additional warp zone that primarily acts as a hidden minigame. To unlock warp zones, you must first find them within a level in that world. You don't know what you're getting into. Playing Super Meat Boy Forever would only unfold a series of events which you later regret. On to Super Meat Boy Forever! Once we open the game, we get a cute little cutscene showing the plot of the game, and this is something that I will commend. The animation in these cutscenes is phenomenal, it's baffling to see that it doesn't even have its own cartoon show. The quality of these cutscenes is superb. Nevertheless, we enter the main menu, and something feels off. So originally, Forever was developed to be a mobile successor to the first game. It was announced in August 2014 as a mobile-only spin-off. Later in 2017, the project was restarted as a full-fledged sequel. But looking at this interface, it still felt like I was playing a mobile game on a PC. Before loading a new game, we get to customize the seed for the levels we're going to play. I don't understand any of that, so I just pressed A. So we enter the first world of the game, Chipper Grove. See, I have the exact same reaction when watching The Last Jedi. So we get another cute cutscene. Once I saw this text, I thought I was playing Pushmo again. Before entering a new level, we get to choose between either of the two characters. I chose Meat Boy because he's in the title. Imagine playing a game set in Japan and you play as someone who's not a Japanese native. Can you imagine? So we entered the first level. Don't judge me on this one, I have yet to recover from Ghost Runner. The first two levels serve as a tutorial more or less. And thank god it's a tutorial because I spent an embarrassing amount trying to beat these two levels. So what are the usual obstacles we can find in this game? Well, we have giant saw blades, flies, mushrooms, and geometry. Given how fast this game is and how tight some areas are in the game, 
It's no wonder this game got mixed reviews when it came out. You have to be incredibly precise with your timing and I'm not exaggerating. The entire time of your playtime in this game is trying to figure out how to get past certain levels in the game. It's not just avoid this or jump over that. The game requires you to be sound and alert with how you utilize everything at your disposal. The level design will be your main tool and at the same time your greatest obstacle. The layout of these levels is so cruel. There's no time for rest between each area, the only time you can rest is by deleting the game. Given that the levels are randomly generated, there's no easy way to figure out the best possible ways to advance through each level. Also, and I don't know if it's just me, but the game frequently slows down. And what I mean by that is that the game runs slow sometimes, not like lagging or stuff like that, as in slow in general. And right after, the game goes back to regular speed, which can be annoying. And this happens whenever it wants. When I'm doing something and I have the speed for it, the game can slow down or speed up and, and kill the momentum I have, leading me to my death. I can't really say much about the details of each level since they're all randomly generated, which gives me more than enough time to talk about the first boss in the game. I'll be honest with you, I, I actually respect you give me a lot of and without being arrogant. Welcome to Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, today we'll be taking a look at Sundowner, he likes kids. In this boss fight, all you have to do is to destroy these four giant buttons. Sounds simple, right? One lesson I learned while playing this level is that it's all trial and error. No matter how hard you try, you are certain to spend more than 30 minutes beating a simple boss. But compared to the other bosses we'll face later, this one is the simplest of the bunch. So we're just going to punch our way out of here. This isn't the protection I was asking for, but might help. Welcome to the second world of the game, the clinic. It's a better alternative to the American healthcare system. Wanna know why? You can just jump right in here when I'll pay. This is how you're supposed to do it, Joe Wyden. A core feature within this entire world is that it contains a bunch of these weird fish things and blocks. The longer you stay around them, a death meter appears around you and when the meter is full, you get what I mean. This is annoying. I know I said that phrase multiple times within multiple games so I'm just going to capitalize on it. Such are the ways of life. These things take up a lot of space and it is painful enough that this game has a lot of areas with tight spaces. So hopefully it doesn't get any worse. Why? Air. Air never changes. The wind is a hundred times worse here than in Celeste, and I should know that because I spent 30 minutes on that level. Moving on, we have these purple guys from Dr. Mario. Whenever you get close to them, they suck you up and lift you up. Now it doesn't mean you're dead, like most problems in life, you can just punch your way out of it 3 times. These guys are more so platforming gimmicks than they are enemies. Moving forward, we have these glass panels that we can just simply punch, ghosts that you can punch several times, and switches that can activate certain elements in the level. So after walking your way through Arkham Asylum, we are facing a giant brain mind controlling a bunch of broken glass shards. As you can probably tell, most of these bosses are gimmick fights. So there's a certain level of easiness in them, but they're not. I hate them. To defeat this guy, all you have to do is to avoid the obstacles he launches at you, either requiring you to duck or jump at a certain height. At the end of each wall, there's a switch that activates the fans and leaves the brain exposed, allowing you to perform the true technique in brain massaging. And you have to do this entire process until the health bar goes down. Overall, I like this boss and it's definitely a lot harder than the first, however I'm not saying I enjoyed this fight, so moving on. Well, I certainly have more than enough in the toilet. Here we are at Tetanusville. Does it come with Kool-Aid? Here we are introduced to the conveyor belts. Red means you slow down, yellow means you stop, and green means you move much faster, but it all depends on which direction the conveyor belts are oriented at. Next, there are these keyholes to unlock, and if there's a keyhole, there's the key, and let me just ask this. 
Why? This isn't Captain Toad Treasure Tracker where I have to find a bunch of keys to progress. No, this is Super Meat Boy, damn it. This just slows down the gameplay. I just want this to be over with. There's no reason why something like this should be here. I hate it. It's useless. Well, at least we have pipes. And no, these aren't pipes that can take you to the next world like in Super Mario. They just take you to where the thing you need to get is. Fucking hell. Another feature we have here are these punch walls. You punch them and they move. It just works. Then we have lasers and hooks and you get the idea. Welcome to the third boss of the game, a giant stationary object, cool. To beat Terminator Ballsack, we had to take out these drones by launching these guys toward them, all while avoiding the giant laser of death. Sounds simple, but what about two giant lasers of death? No, scratch that. Three giant lasers of death. I hate this boss so much. After you expose the giant meatball, there's very little time for you to deal damage and by then, you have only dealt a fifth of the boss's health bar. So you're guaranteed to do this entire process at least five times, it's stupid. It gets a sequel? We have now entered the final world in the game, the lab. Cool, where's the meting? Here we are introduced to a whole lot of shit. We have red lasers, giant purple orbs that follow you around, which upon hitting them grants you an additional charge and if you don't use the charge you die. The slime that acts similarly to those giant blocks in the second world, explosive blocks that have a timer on them, transparent blocks that become solid once you pass by them, power blocks that give you certain abilities that replace your standard punches, blocks that reverse gravity, and orbs that grant you the ability to pass through solid surfaces. And welcome to the final boss of the game, Dr. Eggman. This is honestly my favorite boss in the game. Not that because it's easy, because it's not easy, it's batshit difficult, but because of how satisfying it is punching down an entire horde of enemies, it's so clean. To beat this guy, you have to get the power up. And once you reach a wall, use the power up to reach the boss, break the purple orb, and use it to damage the boss. It's a bit confusing to find out how to beat this guy at first, but in the end, doesn't matter. I tried so hard, but got so far, that's just how it works. Chapter complete. It's not over. It, it's, it's not over. Just end already! It's not that fucking hard! Oh, come on! Welcome, the game still hasn't ended. Here we are at the fifth world of the game, hopefully the last. The other side, which is Pig Laden for outer space. We gotta hand it to them. This looks beautiful. It's not easy though, it's never been fair ever since I started this game. We have spike blocks that once you touch them, turn into spikes, and we have these black holes. They don't kill you, instead they launch you in a straight direction you're pointing at. We also have these large blocks that kill you once you're in their range, kinda like thwomps. There are these rocks that slow down everything for a limited time once you punch them. There are also these blocks that form these long platforms depending on which direction you punch them. We also have these blocks that appear and disappear whenever you jump or crouch. We have these things that when you punch near a set of transparent blocks, they become physical. There are spiders that stop the screen from moving and we can move to the other side so long that it's safe. Out of all the worlds in the game, this one is definitely the one I love most. It has a ton of unique features that stand out from the rest and it clashes well with the world's theme. The problem is that I want this game over with, so let's move on to the boss. This is a really cool boss. I like how the two galaxies in the background kind of resemble a face, and the music, it's awesome. But that doesn't distract me from the fact that it nearly took me an hour to beat, and all you have to do is to punch the two giant fists, and you have to go through an entire obstacle course while doing so. This was a great experience though, and it definitely felt like a true final boss fight, but my hands are beginning to bleed, so I'm afraid I have to finish all of this. So that's Super Meat Boy Forever. Honestly, I'm glad that it's short because man, my thumbs are getting tired from all the button pressing and wait, who's this? Lala Fush? L Lala Fox? Lala Fox? Oh, Lala Fox. Oh my god, it's Lala Fox. It's Lala Fox. Oh my god. 
Uh, a lot of fucks. After that, we beat the game and... No. No, 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 no. No fucking way, no. There's no fucking way, there's one more. God fucking damn it. Please. Please, God. Fuck! It just doesn't end, does it? Alright, well, we have the final world in the game called OX Dead Beef, which is actually a real life term used to tell a software crash. The first five levels of this chapter correspond to each world of the game, and these levels are unlocked by completing that world's warp zone. As I said, these are mini games that are hidden in each world. Each of these mini games are actually references to old NES games Mega Man, Punch Out, etc. Upon beating the warp zones, we can now enter the levels in Dead Beef. In this world, you'll find some of the hardest levels and chunks in the entire game. And looking at that description, it's no wonder why I chose to keep on playing. Maybe there's a hidden ending or a secret boss that I can fight. And about an hour into this world, just after beating two of its levels, I just realized that the only reward we can get here are some fucking digital points. Are you fucking kidding me? This game is fucking bullshit. I don't want to talk about this game ever again, and I don't want to go anywhere near it. This fucking bullshit. I'm not going anywhere near it ever again. Fuck this game. 